All right, welcome back everybody. Um, we are now in early August, 1862. And if you recall from the last um, turn, we were down in here in Gibson, Tennessee, otherwise known as Humboldt. And we were pushing up into uh, Columbus and Paducah with the objective of trying to get here before Josh's army got across the river and got to Paducah himself, since I would presume that would have been his objective. And we did. So we're going to start here and then I'll work our, I'll do our typical um, east to west review. But uh, there were some major battles and um, it resulted in a 13 morale swing, which is pretty insane. Now, um, before I go into this, just I'm going to just preface it with, according to Josh, his army did not move the way he had wanted it to. So what ended up happening is we had two separate battles where I had overwhelming odds. Um, so he kind of got screwed on that. I don't know if it was a user error or if it was just something where his troops didn't properly synchronize across as part of the mechanics of the game. I don't know, but that's what happened. So the first battle um, was, I think, five hours long. We only lost 2,500 troops. We almost had 50,000 and uh, no artillery. He lost 56 artillery pieces, all of his cavalry, and almost his entire force of 20,000 troops, which is just insane. Um, I think it's because he was attacking across a river and just couldn't get back. I think that's the reason why. Um, notice we also had, uh, oh, so it's the attacker. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, we received a bonus on the modifiers cause we were blue. And what's interesting about this is that, uh, this happened at Paducah, even though he has the territory there. So I'm not sure why I was in blue. I should have probably been on red as well since... Although, I guess the military control thing was it. It was 50-50 military control. Since we got there before he did, we were on the defensive. So, first battle, uh, or first hour of the battle, it's our, our primary core, Johnson, who is in Paducah, with his three divisions. He only had two divisions. Um, and, uh, as you can see, we inflicted 216 casualties, as well as 1,000 uh, um, cohesion on him. And that's really where I think he got eaten up was he lost a lot of his cohesion. So our two, um, Johnston shows up to supervise things. So we get that extra layer of um, leadership. And again, with 312, another 1,400 on his cohesion. He's not really doing anything. At this point, Sherman's out. We pretty much annihilated Sherman's force. Uh, he's out of, he's exhausted. They won't fight in the next round. Now, Kearney's all that he's left, and now we have my entire army against one division. So, uh, you can imagine things go downhill from there for him. And then, uh, there's pretty much just mop-up duty, hours four and five. Um, we killed Kearney, apparently. And here's what's nuts. We killed Grant. Now, I... <laughs> that's a total game-changer. Because it's, uh, early August 62, he just lost literally his best commander in the entire Union Army. Um, I can tell you from playing the Union last game, it's pretty hard to play as a Union without the, without Grant. Now, that being said, if I end up losing this game, I will never hear the end of it because he won't have Grant the rest of the game. But So Sherman is out, he's injured, Kearney's dead, and Grant is dead as a result of that battle, which is just crazy. Um, next battle, he then crosses with his other corps, with Pope, who is um, just across the river there. So here, the you know, I still have more troops than he does, but um, it's a little bit you know more closer odds in terms of the manpower. But again, he's got that river crossing penalty. So he's got three divisions here. I've got three divisions. He's got a two attack with this guy, a three attack with uh, Meager, and then a two attack with Davis, and then Pope, who's not not all that bad. Um, I'm trying to find his stats, but he's not on here. Uh, so, uh, there was only one hour worth of battle. I think what happens is he tried to cross, couldn't get across, and then, then pulled back. But uh, we did inflict some pretty good casualties on this, too. Uh, we lost 2,000 troops, and he lost 5,000. Um, lost uh, almost 1,000 cavalry and another 14 artillery pieces. He's got a lot of artillery. I don't know wh where all that artillery is at. You'd think almost he's like a separate division um, for his artillery, which he might, actually. But, so that's that. So, um, between those two battles, we get 13 um, national morale. Well, 12 from those battles, and then one from a, a decision. We're sieging Paducah now. 
and then we hold um, Columbus. He doesn't really have anybody in Cairo right now, um, and then he's got this right here, so I want to move on Cairo if possible. We'll see what he does next turn. If he pushes south for, um, further, further south, without shoring up Cairo, I, I may move on it. I may move a division or two up there. Try and burn the depot, and uh, that would really set him back um, supply-wise, because then all he'd have is St. Louis for supply. Um, we did burn the supply over here, but I'm getting behind myself. Let's start over here in Virginia. All right, so he moved up, uh, moved up to Winchester with McClellan. This is the next spot. He'll probably go here. I'm gonna burn the supply depot that I have here because my my next uh, defensive line is gonna be behind this river, and this is gonna be where I'm gonna kind of hold hold Pat for a while, um, hopefully for a long while. Uh, but this is gonna be my defensive line here. Um, pulling these guys back. I'm gonna put uh, AP Hill here in uh, what's this Winchester New Market, and then um, I'm gonna re-equip re Stewart with some more horse horse artillery and, and so forth. Um, I put Hood in with uh, Jackson, so now I've got a um, basically a pretty robust attack force between him and Ewell, and then also. Uh, Kirby Smith is a 3-2, so oh, what I may do in the future is I may put a defensive general in here just so I have one, but again, the intent with Jackson is to use him as a attack force. I need to figure out what to do with Loring. I'm going to wait one more turn, see what to do with him, um, and I may send him kind of out, out west, potentially. And then uh, this is my, my defensive force, so I've got uh, three attack, three defense with Hill, Three defense in the claws, and then uh, two two defense with with B, but then two attack, and then um, a three attack with Hill. Then I moved Lee up here with Jackson. Um, just here's my Raiders. Here's what they're doing. Nothing of import. He hasn't made any move on the coast just yet. And then uh, now I did get uh, Richard Taylor this turn, which is good because he's a training officer. So what this means is that every turn he'll train up two regiments of conscripts to regular soldiers or militia to conscript and then conscript to regular. So first I'm going to put him over here, but he has to be the leader of the stack. So I'm going to put him over here. He'll he'll supersede these guys. Um, each, each of these guys have a couple conscripts in there. I don't know why he's got two sharpshooters. I need to pull one of the sharpshooters out of there. I think I meant to give the sharpshooter to him. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move him up probably to Memphis, and then that's where he's going to hold Pat and uh, just train up uh, various conscripts and militia, while at the same time kind of acting as a division holder for Memphis. I am building a bunch of six-pound artillery because I need four artillery pieces and a supply wagon to build a fort up there at Paducah, so that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to try and do the same thing at, at Nashville. Hopefully I'm not too late in the game on Nashville. Speaking of which, um, he didn't move up on Munfordville this turn, so I'm going to kind of push forward and see if he does he have a force up here. I would think that he does. I know he's anticipating Kentucky flipping for quite some time. So I imagine that he had set up, um, you know, a core at least, or two core, come down this way. Uh, all I have right now is kind of two and a half divisions, so I'm trying to get this one built up to three. I moved him over from the east. Um, his stats are actually higher than that. It's just because I created a division with right now with them. I want to say he's a he might be a three three, um, but I've got a pretty good pretty good generals here four two two, four two three, and then or three two three, and then him, and then I got this guy here for the training officer, which is Bragg. He's going to train these guys all up and give them more experience, and then I have the artillery expert. So you know I don't have the numbers over here per se, but I've got quality leadership. Trying to get military control of these areas. I'm tearing up his rail line. I'm going to try and destroy the depot here. I'm using one of my uh, destroy depot cards. So my hope is I can destroy the depot here. Tearing up the rail line. Um, I believe I was... No, I was unable to destroy the depot there. But that'll be a target of mine in the future, obviously. Tore up the rail lines. Destroyed his supply. So he doesn't have any supply going down here right now. He does have a supply wagon here. In a depot, so he can sustain himself for a little bit. But and then I'm, I'm gonna set up shop right here in the mountains um, because this is a good defensive area, and I've got my supply depot right here. So what I'll do is, if I have to, I'll pull back to here and then burn that depot and then fall back to Little Rock. So that's the plan, at least. Um, and then finally, far west. 
I'm just getting military control. I've got a nice little uh, buffer here. And I may at some point make a move on this fort. He's got a depot there, and he's going to kind of slowly build up troops probably here. So, But he also has a depot here, I believe. Yeah. All right, let me see if there's anything of note. Oh, the Indians are besieging here too, which is great. I love it. Um, so he's building a rid out in Cairo. Probably a good idea. So that sea mine actually did some damage. I put one there. Must have hit him when he was crossing. I wonder if that really helped with my, my battle plan. I don't know. Uh, my telegraph will be done, so the next turn I can put it into something else. Uh, okay, I'm moving them back because they were unsupplied. Get two money last turn. Um, nine money. So last turn we got 12, 14 bucks. And six war supply from our raiders. Destroyed a deep depot with forest, which I showed you up in Missouri. I think that's everything. In Shenandoah, I am going to go against my instincts and pull back. I absolutely hate retreating. It drives me nuts. Um, but it's a strategic withdrawal. Uh, mainly because I only have two divisions here, and it's just a division commander. It's not a corps. Uh, he's got three divisions here, and then three di more divisions here. So if he were to attack with him, which is what I would do, um, he'd have three divisions versus two, and then probably get a probably have um, this corps under Critten Crittenden uh, eventually join the battle too. And it's not worth anything to me. It's not a strategic location or anything. It does have a little bit of money due to that um, um, farm. But what's more important to me is the strategic positioning. So I'm reallocating a lot of crap over here, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, but uh, let's go over the other battles here. So he attacked me over at New Madrid, which is unfortunate because I'll still have those two units being built. I thought they'd build quicker and they didn't, so they got stuck there. But uh, it is what it is. And then finally I attacked him up in um, Kentucky at Munfordville, and uh, we did pretty well. So... I've still got about 19,000 troops there. He's down to eight. And um, he's lost a lot of his power. So I'm going to go all in here and try and take him out. What I did was I had a Beauregard here. I noticed he hadn't moved up like I anticipated. So I kind of suspected that maybe he didn't have anything in Kentucky. Uh, moved some scouts forward and made it pretty clear that didn't have a whole lot here. And I saw um, Buell sitting here with not too large of a force. So what I did was I crossed the river to his his left or his right if you're looking south and then attacked him that way unfortunately because i i kind of took a little bit of a roundabout route to attack him so i wouldn't go across the the river um i didn't attack him until like day 13 or day 14 and i think that's part of the reason why i wasn't able to inflict more casualties than i did okay so let's go um right to the left here just really okay so what i'm doing is i'm going to build another core here so i'm gonna have three cores under lee I'm going to move Lee in with Smith just for um, the time being. And that's that's largely just, uh, you know, because Smith's only a, uh, well, he's a 4 2 1 right now because he's under, under Lee, but he's just not a very good core commander. Put Lee in there. But then what I'm going to do is I'm promoting um, Claiborne to core command. I'm hoping that his command rating will still stay up kind of where it's, where it's at. I'm going to make him the core commander for that third core over under, under Lee. So I'm moving him over. I'm moving Hardy over because of his training um, bonus. Put him in that new core. I am going to move Huger over to the east to give that artillery bonus. And um, probably shift these guys around since I got some good generals in this, this army. And I just don't foresee a whole lot of action happening in Kentucky. If anything, it'll be a defensive battle on his part. So I'm probably going to re relocate some of these generals over to Mississippi or, or elsewhere where I can see some combat. What I do foresee him doing is maybe moving down the river on this side and then trying to get around to, to Memphis that way. So what I'm going to do is I'll probably put a force right here if he does move on here. I'm just going to kind of wait and see. Fortifying Paducah. I'm going to put uh, a fort up here. And I'm going to have, th I have three divisions there. And then um, I have three divisions here. 
which he's going to be my core commander, but I just did this temporarily until I can get another division commander up there. I moved Taylor up here. He's just going to kind of hold. He's going to be here for training, so he's going to train up conscripts and militia. And then I'm going to move those troops back to the front line. We're holding on the far left here with two divisions at the moment. Looks like he's trying to reinforce, so he's got about three. He's got three divisions here now, and looks like he's moving up even more under Hooker. Interesting. So if he's bringing Hooker up here, he's probably intending to attack me. Um, so I'm gonna have to watch that again. It's not too bad. I'm hoping to hold out until the winter here, and then make him attack in the spring, and then I'm just gonna pull back to Little Rock. But uh, hopefully I can hold out until then. Um, I know I said I was going to go left to right, but kind of got carried away there. So All right, so bouncing back here, because um, I just wanted to show you what I was moving over to the east. I'm also going to be moving um, a lot of cavalry. So I'm going to move him over and put him in with Jeb Stewart. So a little bit of line uh, mounted cavalry, more regular cavalry, horse artillery. Uh, and this is an elite uh, unit, and I'm going to move him over to Stuart and then use Stuart kind of more aggressively on his rear, hopefully. I did just get this unit this turn. This unit's pretty impressive. It's a sharpshooter unit, um, Indian. It's got a little bit of mix of uh, infantry, uh, Cherokee, and then cavalry and uh, artillery. So this is going to be my, my new kind of cavalry unit over here in the, in the, the west um, I am going to move Forrest over and make him a division commander under that new core. So I'm um, hopefully Shelby will pop up, or not Shelby, um, Morgan will pop up here pretty soon. And I can start using him as my cavalry commander over here. I still have Shelby as a, as a division commander because I just feel like he's better used that way with the 4-5 offensive. Uh, just depending on Claiborne's stats. Now Claiborne may be as good as Longstreet is in terms of defense. Because right now he's a 7 defense before being promoted up to core command. If that's the case, then I may be good having Claiborne hold down this left flank, which then means if he attacks my middle, which is Jackson, who obviously is my most offensive and least defensive uh, general, even though he does have a five defense, then you know both my core, my my flanking core, can come in and help. So chances are he's going to attack one of my flanks, which is either going to be Claiborne or Longstreet. So I just need like a turn um, to to get situated. So my hope is he's going to attack Newmarket this next turn. And that'll give me the, the one turn that I need to really get everything structured and the, the way I want it. My far left flank is going to be a, a basically a division with, you know, Jeb Stewart. And hopefully he kind of ignores that. Um, now, if he tries to go around my, my flank, then what that'll do is it'll extend him out. And then hopefully that'll give me an opportunity to kind of shwack his, you know, supply line or, or whatever. But all right. So with that, uh, let's run the turn and we will be back. <laughs> 